Hello, welcome to the channel. I'm uh, a bit excited today because uh, this chainsaw here has been down for quite a while and I think I may have the part that's going to fix it. Now uh, this chainsaw, it's a Cobalt 80 volt cordless chainsaw. It's made by Greenworks and uh, I've been happily using this chainsaw for the last three years or so and it's been a pretty good chainsaw. Until recently I was cutting a tree and I started to see uh, smoke coming off the bar and uh, that's not usually a good sign. So uh, I started looking into it and found that the oiler wasn't working properly. Now I did all the preliminary checks, you know, I checked the uh, oil tank filter and it was clear and I blew air through the lines and they were also clear. Now technically this chainsaw should still be under warranty. It came with a five year warranty, but when I looked into the warranty information, it says to uh, take the tool back to the low store in which you bought it to uh, pursue the warranty claim. But I didn't buy this at a store. I actually bought this through an overstock auction. So before uh, going further and trying to pursue the warranty claim, I decided just to see if there was a quick and easy way to fix the chainsaw. And uh, so I'm gonna go through the uh, details of the process that I used to find the problem with this saw, because I think it may be useful to others. And uh, bear with me a little bit here because I'm gonna talk a little bit about a broader issue, which I think impacts a lot of cordless chainsaws. Okay, so let's take a look inside the chainsaw. So take the uh, cover off there. And we need to take this cover off here. So uh, you'll see here there's one, two, three, four screws. They're uh, Torx uh, T20. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, remove those. Now you may need to remove this chain catcher too, uh, depending on how it's in there. I'm able to get the, this uh, cover off without uh, taking off the chain catcher, but it's a little bit tricky. So it may be easier just to remove that if you have any problems. Okay, so there's a, a gap here. I'm just using the screwdriver here to well, pry, pry that open. It came off really easily. Okay, so this is what it looks like. It's really simple inside here. Now, uh, when I first removed that cover, this whole area was completely packed in with wood chips. And I've since cleaned all that uh, area out. And I think those wood chips may have led to my problem. I'll show you that in a moment. But uh, first we need to get to the oiler, which is uh, behind the spur gear. Now, um, this is a little bit tricky because here's the shaft and here's a little retainer. Now, um, normally I would expect to have sort of an E-clip or something like that, but uh, this is kind of a strange design. I've never quite seen something exactly like this before. It's a kind of a clip, but it's kind of in a spiral. And um, I don't know, it, it does work, but it's a little tricky to get off. It's not as easy to, to get off as an E-clip. And um, there's probably a better way to do it. <laughs> but I've never seen these before, so I just ended up prying this off with a little screwdriver. And I found it was impossible to take this off without deforming it a little bit, so just uh, bear that in mind if you're doing this yourself. There we go. So that's uh, that's a little clip there. And then, um, now we can take off this little cover, and then here's the uh, sprocket, the chain sprocket. And you pull that out, and again, this design is really simple. So um, now you can see the oiler. So this is the little oil pump down in here. And interestingly enough, um, there's no adjustment for the oil pump. You can see under the, uh, the bottom of the case there, there's nothing there, no hole. But you can actually adjust this oiler. There's a little adjustment screw there. So I guess if you drilled a hole through the case, you could uh, make this adjustable or you could open up the uh, cover and adjust it that way. Now, um, the way this works is this is the, uh, the shaft, you know, that's attached to the motor. And this is attached, this little white piece here is attached to the shaft. And then this drives the worm gear. There, that was kind of tough to get off for some reason. And uh, here's what I believe my problem is. So you can see, hopefully you can see there's uh, these threads here are completely damaged. So it looks like it got cross-threaded at some point. And I think, um, you know, when I took this apart initially, like I said, there were wood chips all in here and there were a bunch of wood chips right here between this little worm gear and uh, the oiling gear here, or I should say the, the gear on the oil pump. I think that maybe, um, you know, those wood chips kind of forced a gap between the threads of these two gears here, and that may have contributed to the problem, but 
I'm not sure. It could just be that, that uh, this worm gear here is just a very low quality gear. That's also possible. So after I found the problem, you know, I was thinking that I could just replace this worm gear. It probably only costs a few dollars and just a few minutes to replace. But here's the problem I ran into. So neither Cobalt nor Greenworks actually sells this part here. And uh, there are a few other variations of this chainsaw sold under different brand names. So I looked under those and they also don't sell this uh, little worm gear. And uh, what I found is that a lot of the cordless chainsaws, they don't offer a, a full parts diagram or a, a full assortment of parts. Now, um, I did some digging and I did find full parts diagrams and a very large assortment of parts on uh, some of the cordless chainsaws made by Steel, Husqvarna, Echo, uh, Ego, and Makita. But um, otherwise, it was really hard to find a lot of the uh, parts that you may need on a cordless saw. So just as an example, I uh, printed out part of the parts diagram for my Steel 211 because that's a homeowner chainsaw. And uh, this is one out of 16 pages just like this for uh, that uh, chainsaw. In other words, uh, you can basically buy any part on that chainsaw. Now, as a comparison, this is a, a printout of the uh, Greenworks 80 volt cordless saw. So Cobalt actually doesn't uh, publish, or at least I couldn't find a parts diagram for this chainsaw. But as I mentioned, it's made by Greenworks and Greenworks does have a parts diagram. Uh, here it is. The problem is, is the en entire parts diagram is this. It's only uh, 12 parts. And uh, a lot of those parts include things that um, you don't really need to buy from the manufacturer, like the bar and the chain. Well, that's a standard Oregon bar and chain. You can buy that anywhere. And the scrunch tool, you know, that's a standard uh, size scrunch tool. So um, I found that uh, this was mostly useless. There are a few things like uh, the handle that you can actually purchase, but um, things like this worm gear, that's just out of the question. So at this point, I probably could have just called Cobalt to see if they would honor my warranty, but instead I decided to jump further down the rabbit hole because I became really curious to know if I could source this little worm gear. And I just kept thinking that uh, there must be another design that's uh, either the same or similar enough that I could adapt something to this chainsaw. So I started looking through all the different manufacturer designs from all the uh, usual chainsaw manufacturers, and I was uh, coming up empty. I, I spent quite a lot of time on this until I uh, ran across Makita. Now, uh, Makita has on uh, a couple of their chainsaws, actually, I think there are three different uh, model cordless chainsaws that have this uh, same worm gear, or at least a, a worm gear that looks very, very close, at least uh, from inside of the package here and from the photos I saw online. It looks like the same gear. So I went ahead and bought two just because they were pretty inexpensive. And uh, these actually have the Makita marking on the gear itself. So I'm hoping that if they fit, uh, they're a little bit uh, better quality than this original cheap one. So um, I'm about to find out, or we're gonna find out together, whether or not a Makita worm gear will fit into this uh, Greenworks or Cobalt chainsaw. Okay, so here is the original worm gear. Here's the, uh, the damage section right there. And then here is the uh, Makita gear. And uh, I've looked at these uh, pretty closely now, and I don't really see any differences other than you know the color and the fact that this one has a Makita marking on it. But they look pretty much identical. So um, let's see if it fits. So that's a good sign. It fit over the shaft. It definitely has the same type of little um, connections here. These little triangles that meet up with this piece here. So um, yeah, let's put it back together and uh, see if it works. Okay, so I'm gonna leave off this little clamp for now because this is a bit of a pain. I'm just gonna uh, check now to see if it works. Now I've uh, gone ahead and added some uh, oil to the tank and have the battery in. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it some throttle and uh, I should start to see oil come right out of here. So that's where the oil comes out onto the bar. So let's see if it works. <laughs> go. 
Okay, I think I fixed the problem. I just need to uh, get that little um, clamp in place and put everything back together. Okay, so I got the chainsaw put back together. I got a uh, bar and chain on. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it outside and see how the oiler's working. Okay, I'm gonna uh, check for an oil pattern coming off the bar first, and then I'll make a few cuts. I don't know how visible it was before, but uh, this is the oil that's uh, coming off the bar and chain. So this chainsaw is definitely oiling properly now. Okay, well it looks like Makita saved the day by having a part available that uh, just so happened to fit my chainsaw here. Now uh, this was not a cheap saw. In fact, it uh, certainly cost a lot more than what I'd consider as a disposable tool. So it's a little bit disappointing that Cobalt and Greenworks and some of the other cordless chainsaw manufacturers don't offer a full assortment of parts. So uh, if you're in the market for a new cordless chainsaw, parts availability is definitely something that uh, you might want to look into and think about because otherwise after the warranty period expires, the uh, chainsaw just may end up in a garbage heap. So uh, that's about all I have for this video and uh, we'll see you next time.